is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. How are you? Yes, this is the Ramble. Yeah. Goes on until uh, midnight tonight. Right now it's about, uh, well, it's five minutes past 10 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time here in New York City. So that wherever you are around the world, you can accommodate for that and tell whether we're alive or Memorex. Okay. Anyway, I'm Alex Bennett. And uh, uh, as we do usually at this time every night, we have a guest. And this time... Uh, He's here with vision. With vision? Is that what the word I want to use? Well, anyway, let's check in with it. Ladies and gentlemen, you're looking at Bob Rubin. Now, go ahead. Catchphrase. Cat. Lighten up, everybody. The old room's here. Yes, uh, isn't that wonderful, ladies and gentlemen? Lighten up, everybody. It's Bob Rubin, the fabulous Bob Rubin. He's, oh, no! The amazingly successful Bob Ru- no. <laughs> no. God, I, w- I wish you were more, I wish you were, like, uh, you know, more successful because you're great. You're just funny and you're, you get, you're special. And, and why, <laughs> why is it I'm the only one in the world that sees that? I don't know, man, but you always were, so, yeah. so that was cool. Yeah, no, I always believed in you. I was, and San Francisco... Yeah, yeah. Well, we had a lot of great times together, man, because that you believed in me and, and and allowed me to come down and go crazy on the show. And then the shows we did at night, we had a lot of fun. The breakfast with Bennett's were great, man. I love that, man. Yeah, but you know what happened is, is that you? It wasn't me that made you popular. You made you popular. Those the audiences loved you. Well, I think the audience enjoyed me. You know, I think that. Uh, you know, you had such a large audience that there were enough people that that really liked what I did, and and some people <clears throat> didn't get it, and uh, you know, but that's fine, man. We had a we had a heck of a run, man. We had a heck of a good time, man. and and um, people still talk about it, man. They still they talk about it, you know on, when I do shows up in San Francisco, <clears throat> it's almost like it still was the old days. You know, it's crazy because I'll get. Diehard fans, and uh, every now and then you make new fans. But uh, the thing is, I've never had a platform like that since then. Now, Saturday Night Special on uh, on the Fox Network 20 years ago could mm-hmm. have been that platform, but we only made it through six episodes. But yeah. the first six episodes, I was getting all the notice, and all, and even people on the streets were, you know, Stopping the other room, you know. You know, it's it's amazing. It's amazing how fast TV will make you known. Oh, it's crazy. And it, and it's also amazing how fast not being on TV will make you disappear. Well, uh, yeah. Also, in the eyes of the uh, like, I had a really good uh, uh, what do you call it? A guy that books uh, uh, comedy. You know, books you. It's called an agent. Well, yeah, an agent, but a booking agent is what a I meant. A booking agent, okay. Booking agent. He wasn't across the board, like, theatrical and all that. But he's a booking agent, man. It's funny. He's he got all these great plans for me, and uh, he wanted me and, and Carl LeBeau to do a tour together. Because Carl was on the show with me, you know. And uh, Let's say, explain who Carl LeBeau is, because a lot of people don't know of him either. Oh, Carl's a great, a funny man. He, he uh, was one of the original outlaws of comedy. Him and... Uh, Sam Kinison started doing stand-up together years ago back in Houston, and they moved to L.A. together with, with Bill Hicks and those guys. And yeah. uh, uh, when, uh, when, Sam, when Sam blew up and started doing his tour, The Outlaw of Comedy, uh, or The Outlaws of Comedy, uh, well, uh, Carl LeBeau was his main guy. It was like there were like a couple guys. There was an MC couple guys and then the guy that went up right before sam was carl and uh he's still out there plugging away in the trenches man and uh very funny guy and um so they had a tour plan in fact it wasn't carl was i may be wrong was it carl who was there on the highway when sam died yeah man he was was uh, in the car behind Sam. yeah he, he he was in this uh he saw sam get hit 
and then he pulls over. He saw Sam's car get hit uh, corner to corner on the front. Didn't really seem like that much of a big deal, you know. And then mm-hmm. uh, he sees Sam get out of the car. And then Sam collapses and Carl's got him in his arms on the ground there. And uh, Sam's saying, Sam's saying, not now, not now, not now. And then he, then he kind of paused and then he said, okay, okay, okay. And then he died. That's what, uh, you know, I've heard the same story from everybody. In other words, uh, you know, whenever I've heard that story, they yeah. always correctly reported the same thing about what Sam's last words were. Yeah, because Carl was right there. Carl yeah. was right there. So that was. So does you, did it always sound to you like the OK OK was an acceptance of what was happening? Yeah. Yeah, but like the, yeah, like when he was staying OK, it was like he's having a conversation with somebody. Yeah. When he was saying not now, he was still in, completely in this plane of existence. Yeah. And, and he realized what had happened. And he, I think he realized he was dying, and he was pleading to whoever would listen, not now. And then, like, some gateway opened up, and he was talking to somebody. He said, okay, okay. And like, they're like, saying, come on, Sam, it's all right. Come with us now, you know? It's going to be It's going to be fine. <laughs> it's going to be fine. Yeah, that's yeah. what it seems like, though. So, the whole thing is uh, spooky, and the whole thing was sad, and, uh, you know, because he was young, man. He was young, and... Uh, Hey, he, uh, we, we, I talked about this with Bubbles a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the, there are a lot of uh, comics either live to be forever, okay? You know, like Mel Brooks is Mel Brooks is about to turn twenty ninety one. I think Carl Reiner may be a, a year or two older than that. I it's, heard on the radio this morning that uh, Mel Brooks is uh, uh, he turned ninety one today, and uh, let's see. And uh, Carl Reiner's 95. Carl Reiner's 95. Either that or you go young. You know, yeah. Hicks, thir- 32. How old was Sam? He was... 31, 32, something like that. That, that young. Yeah. Okay, I thought he always looked a little older than that, but then again, he was pretty shop-worn. Yeah, yeah. he was. But... It's, it, it's interesting, and I've said this before also in, in, in the interview with, with uh, Bubbles, that the, the the common statement that everybody made is we all knew that Sam would die of drugs, but not in someone else's body, because he was hit by a drunk driver. Right. Yeah. That, you know, we didn't never expected that. That was you know, and uh, it was all off the wall. You know, and I I was especially hurt by it because I knew Sam quite well, and yeah. I loved Sam. You know, I just uh, uh, loved the guy. Uh, everybody used to talk about what a prick he could be, and I'm imagining he would. I know, I know that the, the, the legendary story. If anybody's watching the show, I'm dying up here. The club, this woman who owns the club, Goldie, is really based on Mitzi Shore, who who ran uh, what what store? What, what is that club? The uh, the comedy store. The comedy store, uh, and it was like she's like supposed to be Mitzi Shore, basically. And um, Sam used to work there all the time. And up on the hill, they had a house where they put up the comics, right? It was kind of like a comedy. It wasn't a condo. It was actually a very... Oh, uh, it was a house, man. And I've, I've been up there several times. And uh, Sam used to crash up there. And at any given moment, there were 10 comedians living there and 20 comedians hanging out all night anyhow. Yeah. You know? So it was literally, ladies and gentlemen, a house that uh that mitzi shore bought so she could put the comedians up yeah which, which yeah. is it, it and that's better than having to pay for a hotel if you're bringing in a headliner <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. anyway uh sam was there or living there or was visiting there and there was one comedian he com- really hated so he went into that comedian's room and oh, yeah. pissed all over his bed you know the story right I- story yeah you yeah. want to tell them who that guy was he uh, the, I can't remember I don't know I'll tell remember. you who it was Mark Marin oh that's funny man wow he went in he so hated Mark Marin and so did a lot of us that he went in and pissed on Mark Marin's bed 
And that's when uh, Mark Marin first got the idea to do the podcast, so it all worked out. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, you know, Sam, I'll tell you what's funny with Sam. Uh, okay, check this out. Wait a minute, you just froze on me. Are you there? Oh, God, did this happen? <laughs> Wait a minute. I started, Wait a minute. started to do your show, I yeah. mean, like right, right before, a few months before. And then when I did your show, I... <laughs> You're freezing up. Wait a minute. You're freezing up on me. Oh, now, now we're now it looks like we're okay. All right, continue. This never happened to Ed. This ever. This never happened to Ed Murrow on. Uh, um, what was the name of that program? Uh, person to person. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, man. Nobody. Did. Nobody. Well, that's what happens when you don't go digital. Yeah. The. Uh, oh, after I did your show, you know, playing. Uh, I did a lot. You know, a million gigs up the bear. Which, you know, I still love to do. That's my my comedy home and basically my home in Los Angeles never was. I never picked up, you know, any good vibrations down here. But uh, anyhow, uh, before I did your show, I was at one of the first gigs I ever did for money was they had uh, Sam Kennison headlining at Cobbs. Billy J was the middle act and I was the MC. Mm -hmm. Now, they put a sandwich board out front of Cobbs with these articles yeah, about Sam. And at the top, across in big black letters, it said, warning. So they wanted Sam, they wanted to, people to know how uh, caustic and uh, uh, scatological Sam was, you know? And uh, um, and Sam had just done the uh, Young Comedian special, but it hadn't aired yet, or it was just airing that week. So anyhow, the crowds were packed, but he, he walked a lot of people which is something that, you know, I became familiar with over the years, too. But right. But anyhow, I'll never forget this after the first night. And this is me. I'm a young comedian. Right. right? After the first night, I'm walking. I'm walking around backstage and I, I, I hear Sam and, and he's in Tom Sawyer's face. And he's point. Sam starts pointing me, goes, and this guy, this guy's the MC. This guy should be headlining. Are you kidding me? And I'm like, hey, thanks, Sam. The next night. No Billy J. It's just me and Sam. It's a two-man show. And then uh, by Friday night, I'm on stage improvising with Robin Williams and Sam. So on stage, it was Robin, Sam, and me. <laughs> and I had been doing stand-up for about a year, man. And, and, and there, was, by the way, there's no record of that anywhere, right? Nobody was no. recording it, you know. No, it's back before people had everything on their phone, you know. Yeah. Uh, back before, uh, before the. I mean, what a what a what a moment, uh, you know, Sam well, Kennison incredible. and and Robin together, and then you, and yeah. because they they both had they had you there because they considered you an equal. They did right. That's you, what you I was know. so excited about it. Yeah. At the time. yeah. So here's the funny thing. Back then, uh, uh, I used to wear sheriff's uh, fake sher a toy sheriff's badge on my jean jacket. And I always wore my jean jacket. And um, so uh, after that weekend, uh, about a month later, I went down to Los Angeles to do the uh, comedy store. And I see Sam a couple blocks away standing in front of the store. And I said, I think uh, I think Bob Moore was with me. I said to Bob Moore, I go, hey, there's Sam. And, uh, and uh, he goes, oh, you got to go say hi. And I go, you think he'll remember me? And I just got done saying that where you hear you hear somebody yell out, it's the sheriff, everybody run, the sheriff's in town. And it was uh, Sam, you know, yeah. he, he was the outlaw and I was the sheriff. <laughs> so he was always very nice to me. And then uh, what was funny, though, one time he, uh, he was playing in Vegas and Bob Moore went up to see him and they're hanging out after the show. And, uh, you know, this is when Sam was, was pretty big and... Uh, you know, Sam was a wild man, and he had the long coat and the beret. And uh, but he said to Bob Moore, which was interesting, he goes, "You know, he goes, well, Rube's great, but you got to tell him to shave the beard, man." You know, as if that was too yeah. wild. Which I always thought was funny. It was like getting advice from the wild man to, sh to shave my beard. Let me ask you a question. And I just want to say, uh, oh, yeah. I didn't shave that beard, and and now I live in a beautiful home here in the Hollywood Hills. That's right. I'll tell you something, though. I mean. When he wanted to be good to somebody and helpful to somebody and like somebody, 
Yeah. Sam was the best friend you could ever have. Absolutely. And if he didn't like you, God help you. He'd go after you, man. I mean, he'd literally go after me, pee on your bed. Yeah. Right. You know, uh, and and I guess that's what I liked about him. You know, I, it's the same thing I like about cats. I love cats, and I love cats because you have to earn their respect. You don't just get it because you feed them. Yeah. You know and what I'm saying? So, yeah. and, and, and Sam was a guy who, you know, you had to earn his respect. But when once you got it, he was, he was good for it, you know. And he would ask me, like, I, I know he was playing the... Uh, uh, the Civic Center in in San. I remember Fran. that gig, man. Huh? I remember that gig. Yeah, I and I, he had me MC it. You know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and Carl LeBeau was at that gig. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I I just I really I really liked uh, Sam, and I think that, that it was sad, but you know, he you I'm I wonder now later though. You know, we 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 know how big Sam Kinison became, but. Is he remembered today by a lot of people? That's yeah. a very good question, man. I mean, people like you and, and me and, and, and our peers, yes. But how far back does that go? I don't know. Like most people probably don't remember Bill Hicks, you know, unless you saw Bill Hicks and you realize how great he was. Yeah. But, you know, it seems that when people die, they disappear, you know. And the ones that kind of remain, remain for strange reasons. I mean, I'm trying to think. There were some people I was mentioning the other day that most, you ask a kid about somebody uh, who died uh, 30 years ago but was very big at the time, and they, they don't know who they are. They don't care who they are, no. you know. Uh, if a Kardashian died, the whole country would be in mourning, you know. They, the whole world would flip out. So... Sam Kinison was very well known at the time, but then he died, and now he's not around anymore. And as the years go by, he disappears. That's kind of what I feel kind of has happened to me regarding, say, San Francisco or regarding the radio business. The show in San Francisco was very big. I get people writing me, say, oh, come back to San Francisco. you got to do that show again. And I write, I write back, hey, lightning doesn't strike twice, you know? Yeah. They talk to me at, at the show when I'm up in the Bay Area, and they're like, well, you know, why doesn't Alex come back and do a show? I'm like, I don't know. I think it'd be great if you did. Well, I we're thinking of doing maybe coming back to San Francisco and doing a couple of gigs with, with, with like you and Bubbles and Durst and, you know, Pearl and people, good, good people. Anyway, but the point is that what I'm saying is, is that after you no longer, and you found that with television, you no longer have that platform. All of a sudden, you start to fade. You start to become invisible. Well, it becomes immediate, huh? It becomes immediate. Well, in your <laughs> case, in your in your case, because you hadn't been that established that much, it became immediate because all of a sudden you were doing TV, and then all of a sudden you weren't. In right. my case, I was doing a show, and people missed it for a couple of years. But you know, as time goes on, you disappear in the minds of those people. And if I went back to San Francisco walked into any radio station, said, I'm Alex Bennett and I want a job. They'd say, well, what's your, what's your resume? Because the people working there never heard of me, right? So to suddenly go back to San Francisco and say, hey, I want to do a show again. No, you it's know, a trip. Uh, the, the people I'd be talking to uh, about getting the job don't even know who the fuck I am. So yeah. really, I've slowly felt that I that Alex Bennett is disappearing, and all that's really left is Bennett Schwarzman, you know, uh, and that uh, when you're not on any longer, memories fade, you know, and the hardest thing is to maintain that 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 presence. And I I bet you talk to a lot of comics who know that that's that's the the problem. You know, they have to keep pushing and keep pushing and keep pushing. Yeah. You know, and, uh, oh yeah, you know, and uh, uh, you know, uh, like, yeah, and, and they work their Twitter and their Facebook and the Twittering and the Twittering and the Twittering. And I, I talked one time about doing all the hours on your show, and I said that's got to equal at least 1.8 million good tweets when you break it down into 140 characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now I'm too burned out to recreate that, man. You know. I don't, 
I don't want to. Plus, you know, you, you, your show was, you know, it was, it was uh, electric, man. It was live. You go in there in the morning and, and uh, you know, I'd go across the street and have a drink, come in, and you get to talk to all these people that are in their car going to work, and you had a live studio audience. I don't want to pull up a, uh, I don't have a smartphone, but I don't want to sit at my computer. I, I you know, I just, my yeah. brain shuts down if I pull up Twitter. Yeah. It's not, it's, what I'm saying is not, you're not touching people, man. You know, like in that yeah. Mel Brooks, I mean, well, that, look, look, I, I, I'm not going to say that there isn't an art to Twitter. You no, know, there that is. there are people who know how to manipulate Twitter. I'm sorry, I'm too old to learn it, really. I try to say something and it's just literal. It's, you know, <laughs> Uh, it, and, and I prefer Facebook because I, uh, 138 characters is too little for me. You know, uh, I need I need a larger forum. But um, what was I going to say? It, it it you know, uh, it is uh, things that that we did then were of the moment. It was a time when the city needed something like Alex Bennett and all these wacky comics coming no, But anymore. also, I'm just saying, though, it, you know, everything was live. Everything was there with other people. In other words, I Yeah, but, you know, the one thing you got to remember, uh, uh, Bob, is that the rules change, you know? I mean, uh, uh, people say to me, I have a guy working a show here on the network, who's an old radio guy, and he goes, hey, maybe we can get this on the radio, maybe we can get this on the radio, and I just say to him, hey, there isn't radio anymore. You know, it really doesn't exist. You have to get rid of that notion. The only people that feel that radio exists are the radio station owners who, who somehow have wanted to delude themselves into thinking they still have a business. Yeah. You know, uh, that, that the whole method, the whole dissemination of, of, uh, of, of product is different now, you know, and I'm doing it on the internet, and I don't know if I'm completely ready for the internet. I'm I'm a, maybe a little too old to know all the nuances of what you have to do to get a large audience and things like that. I mean, I get a decent sized audience, um, yeah. but it's not like I used to get, right? And it's it's a whole different game, and people aren't used to whole different games, you know. And so uh, to say we, we can go back and do radio, uh, radio doesn't exist. It's not a form. And the people who own it and the way they're operated, that radio doesn't exist. The business that I loved and that I did is gone. Yeah, it doesn't You know. Yeah. And uh, what do I do at 77 years of age? Uh, am I going to walk into a radio station and say, hey, give me a job? And they're going to look at me like I'm, a, I'm a, from outer space, right? Because the person sitting across the desk from me is in their 30s. So, you know. There's well, no, it's a cruel world and you got to play the lottery. It, it, uh, you know, I, I, I have a place across the street that sells lottery tickets. And I've never bought a lottery ticket over there or perhaps hardly in my life. But I'm considering it from time to time as a method of survival that maybe I might hit something. Yeah. Yeah, man. You I, know. Know. I mean, I'd love to hit the but big I, one. I Huh? Well, I tell you what I wanted to say though about uh, we're talking about Twitter for a sec. Twitter, I know how to work it. I know how to do it. And occasionally I'll go on bursts where for a whole week I'll put stuff up there every day. But my point is, it's boring. I, you know, I grew up, you know, like a, an animal going up and down the. Street. Yeah, um, well, you just froze again, but you froze towards the end of the show, so maybe that's a good thing. Uh, Oh, what I'm saying boy. is like doing your Here show. We go. There we go. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Do you get to do your show, you get to get to thousands of people at one time, much like Twitter, but it was see, you know, it's like, oh, I better figure out how to be clever in 140 characters and do all the angles and uh 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 but the thing is, all I'm saying is that's boring. That's boring. even if I had a wildly successful Twitter feed. It would still be boring to go to and like think this is my interaction with people. You know what I mean? I mean, we, we used to have people phoning in. We had a live studio audience. I remember, remember those shows that were so packed that you had to rotate the audiences. Remember those? Yes. Yes. I See, remember that, once we had, right. once we had Jackie Chan on with Tori Amos and there was a line 
outside the radio station went around the block trying to get in for what essentially was 50 seats. Yeah, man. Yeah, I remember when Goldthwait and I did shows together and people would be lined up around the block, man. And, and I have, you know, on the old tapes, you can hear you yell out, rotate. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, listen, uh, friend, oh, friend, oh, friend. It's uh, time to say goodbye once again. All right. I'm going to be in Austin, Texas. When? Quickly. Um, uh, the 29th and the 1st, uh, four shows. Oh, what, 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 no, but by the time this show goes on, that will have passed. Okay, well, it went great. Did it go great? They really love me in Texas. Texas hey. Toast is what they're calling me now. Hey, listen, let's do this again in a couple of weeks, Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Stay where you are so I can talk to you afterwards. Ladies and gentlemen, the old Rube has Bye. been here. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And that's our old friend Bob Rubin, and we love having him here, and we love talking to him, and we'll talk to him more. He's one of the people we have now that we can see and in a matter in a matter of weeks, uh, when we get together to do it, uh, we'll be doing more videos with more comics. One of which is Bobby Slayton. Uh, I was talking to him just the other day, and he said, "Sure, we'll fire up the old Skype, and people can see what I'm doing." Okay. Anyway, it's time for me to open up Skype. Let me open up the Skype line. See if anybody wants to call. You know, we're not doing a show tomorrow night. In my place here will be. Um, uh, Jack Bishop, who will do my show, and uh, I'm just I'm going out to the island. I'm only going out till Sunday. I'm coming back on Sunday. I'll tell you why later. It's just it's gotten to be such a pain in the ass with some people over at GoPro, uh, and wouldn't you know? But they're sending me back my the the, the thing that broke. They're they're sending me back a replacement while I'm going to be out of town. So I, I don't know, it's just, you know, so I, rather than stay till Monday and leave on Monday, I'm going to come back Sunday so I can be here when the package is supposed to arrive. So, and I, I'm not that hot about going out on this vacation anyway. So, you know, uh, I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I like my creature comforts. I mean, actually I'd have the whole house to myself. I could bounce off walls if I wanted to. Anyway, I'm going to be a little punchy tonight because I forgot to make my tea. I'm not drinking coffee now. I'm drinking tea. Uh, and uh, so, you know. Anyway, hey, look who's calling. I haven't heard from him in a while. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, all the way from Plano, Texas. Yep, it's Scott Boddicker. Hi, Scott. Hey, Alex, I can't believe Rube was in Austin, and I missed it. Uh, uh, he was, wasn't he? God, See? I could have went down there. Could have gone down there and seen him. It's only a four-hour trip. I should have actually, I, I do two at a time, right? I should have actually oh, yeah. reversed them so that it would have been on last <laughs> week, and you would have known, but, yeah, well. I, I was out east anyway, so I, it, it, yeah. the, the game, but, but yeah. Where have it, you it, been? We haven't heard from you in a while. I've been on the road. You've been on the road? Doing yeah. what? Oh, just visiting family and whatnot. Yeah. Keep other in-laws and yeah. other families. Yeah. Do you notice but, that the first person calling now never has a problem anymore? Hey, that's good because I hated doing that. You know, I hated doing Well, it got to the go point. It got to the point where a lot of people weren't uh, paying attention uh, to our... Uh, uh, to, to when we first came on, they weren't calling because they didn't want to be the first one to call and they get bounced off. But now everything is cool. So, hello, Rob Alfano. Hello, Alex. Yeah. Hey, Scott. How are you all tonight? Yeah. Great. I'm tired. I I should have had the tea and I forgot to do the tea. I forgot to make it. How, how's that? And uh, then uh, then uh, then tomorrow morning I'm being aroused at about 9.30 so that we can then go out to Fire Island so I can spend where? one day there and come back. What? Where, in fi where on Fire Island are you uh, going to be? I can't remember what the name of the town is now, but it's where all the old Jews live. So, 
Yeah, no, is I'm not kidding you. Is it an island, I assume? What? Is it an island, I, I mean, or is it just a name of a town called... Fire Island yeah. is actually an island. So, yeah, it's a little a little island off of Long Island. You need to take a ferry boat to get there from, like, Bayshore. Yeah. And, okay. and when you say you're going to Fire Island, everybody thinks you're gay. Well, there are areas of Fire Island where that would be true. Where that I had a house be. there one summer. Yeah. Rented a house there one summer in Seaview. Zeke, that's where I'm going to be. Seaview. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I, Am I right? I it's, the a, Jewish, it's the Jewish neighborhood. Well, my claim to fame about the house I lived in in Seaview for the summer was on the same street as uh, Tony Randall. Oh, really? Got, I didn't know I got that. to meet, this was 1997, I got to meet Tony and his young wife and their baby. Oh, well, I don't think right my friend, now? I don't think my friends were living out there then at that point. Uh, I think they bought the house. When did they buy the house? I think they bought it in about 2000, I would think, 2001. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, uh, but the uh, seafood is nice, you know, yeah, but it's, it nice. but it's, it's Fire Island. And, uh, you know, you say, I'm going to Fire Island to get away from the city. But everybody who's in the city is in Fire Island. That's right. You know, the so best the city is nice and quiet. <laughs> the best place to be in New York City this past July 4th was in New York City. That's it, right. Except for the fireworks of these assholes with their fucking firecrackers at 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, this was actually a very quiet town. You could walk into any restaurant and there were tables available, you know, because everybody leaves town. And where do they all go? Fire Island, right? Yeah. Hamptons, so, Fire Island, the Jersey Shore. Yeah. So why that though, the time to leave is when everybody's in town and not anywhere else. That's right. That's you know. true. Well, speaking of the Jersey Shore, did you guys, I mean, uh, did you guys pay attention to the news over the weekend with Chris Christie? The beached whale? That was just the funniest thing in the world. I'm at my brother's house, and I open up my computer, and I look online, and I, and I see that uh, they couldn't pass a budget in New Jersey. And so Chris Christie signed, uh, he signed a, 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 what was it, an emergency declaration that only emergency services were open. So all the... All the state-run beaches were closed, and of course, Chris Christie is caught with his family sitting out at the beach on an on a deserted beach. Yes, right, a deserted <laughs> beach. Uh, it's great. His big fat carcass soaking up the sun. Couldn't care less. Yeah. And you notice he used his Trump. He used he, he, the the new thing now is the Trump press conference. Next question. Next question. Next question. Yeah. Well. Everybody's Sable getting rude. It, what? Everybody's getting yeah. Everybody's he, he getting rude. He was uh, saving the whales. He, it was he, a beached whale, and uh, he, uh, he was, was saving um, them. Yeah. Oh, it was like, him. Wait a minute. It was him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He was saving them. So anyway, so that, you know, it was uh, it was uh, quite a uh, quite a uh, situation there with uh, Chris Christie. Uh, he um, he certainly uh, if you know if he hadn't been out at the beach i mean if he if he had gotten a budget so everybody else could go out to the beach right but he went out to the beach nobody else could fit on the beach if he was out on the beach oh hey hey yeah <laughs> yeah that's, that's uh, please that. never a rim shot on this show okay never <laughs> that was the big rule that was the big rule i had we had, albert and i had no rim shots all right, I'll come up with something else. It's so tragically trite. Yeah. Am I right? Uh, yeah. I'll try uh, this one. Yeah. No, no, no. Don't you you use that sound <laughs> effect machine one more time. I'm hanging up on you. I'm hanging All up right. on you. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Just you've been warned. You've been put on on All notice. All right. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, what was I going to say? Uh, I wasn't going to say anything actually. Did you hear that? Uh, this is interesting. Another funny story in the news: that Donald Trump, always a funny yeah. story in the news, uh, went to uh, Germany. Huh? Is it Hamburg there in? Oh yeah. yeah. And he got there and found out he didn't have a hotel room. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> right. For reservation. They they didn't make a reservation. Well, you can stay on the. Plane. And, and when they said, "Do you have a room?" They basically said the whole town is filled. So yeah. he had, so he had to go to the American embassy to stay. Uh, I don't put this on his plane. That. 
how could that happen? I mean, I I worked with the vice president a bunch of years ago in Orlando, yeah. Yeah. and they send out they send out the advanced teams and all that with the with the dogs. I mean, they know exactly where the president's going to the vice president is going to be at all times. How is it that they miss that? The well, here, he, must not care anymore. Well, here no, here's how it happened. Okay, uh, and I know this is going to sound uh, um, uh, weird. Well, it's not going to sound weird. It's all Trump's fault. Because what happens when you go to various countries, the people who make the arrangements for you in those countries are the ambassadors. And he has an empo- uh, appointed, I think, a new ambassador to, to Germany or something like that. And so there was nobody who made, who made the reservation. <laughs> you should go back and sleep on Air Force One. I would have. That's nice. what I would have done. Yeah, but, no. you know. Then you have to go to the airport, you know. Anyway. Yeah, well, it's Hello, better Jay- than the U.S. Embassy. Hello, Jason. Nice to, hotel hotel nice to uh, see you here two nights in a row. Yeah. Freaky. Huh? Hey, doesn't Trump have a hotel in uh, in Germany? No. Huh. Yeah. And I if he did, to to Russia probably, hotel. he's probably going to buy one quickly now. If he did, Merkel would have closed it down, you know. <laughs> they, she does not like him. You think Putin could have shared his room? Yeah, sure. Sure. That's you know, there's two beds in the room. <laughs> somebody said today that uh, that meeting is going to be uh, uh, Trump is going to be eaten for lunch at that meeting because he knows because no wait a minute, wait a minute because he knows how to play Trump. Yeah. And all you do is you start saying nice things about him to him and he will immediately warm up to you. And then the world is yours, okay? What uh, the what, art of what? the the art of the deal with Trump is flatter him, and you can get him to give up every penny he's got. What every what's penny. in it for Putin? Putin wants uh, less sanctions. Uh, he wants his two embassy housing uh, compounds back. Uh, you know what's in it for Putin to make Trump look like an idiot? He's not going to make Trump look like an idiot. He's just going to eat him for lunch. That's all. He's going to he's going going to flatter the shit out of him. You know. I mean, look at what the Saudis did to Trump so that they could get their way. When he went out, wait a minute, wait a minute. When he went out to the airport, when he came in from the airport, they had signs saying "Welcome Donald Trump, wonderful world leader," and all that. And they only did that so that once he got there, he'd give them anything they wanted. He's a sucker. (laughs) <laughs> and you got a lot I don't of know. you know there's there's you know both people have to win in a deal otherwise uh it's not a good deal no not every in this case not everybody well, has to win in a deal Trump yes, wins yeah. by getting uh getting getting praised and and love yes jason hey, actually just a side note is uh your feed going over facebook all right because yesterday i was having a problem with it too and then today it was just frozen screen. Well, I have no idea why, because it's. I look at it here, and it's working just perfectly. All right, maybe it's just me. I just that's why I and, wanted to ask. And I yesterday don't know. it was working at first, and then it yeah, stopped working. There, there are no drop frames. However, there are less people watching it. I don't know why. Uh, there are less frames. Uh, hello, Mike. Uh, hello but, there. Uh, who? Who else? Anybody else watching it on Facebook at all? I'll get it on there. Yeah. So no. I watched your interview just for a quick second, and then uh, I came back later on, and it was just a, it was a frozen screen. Yeah. Well, this is – it's not freezing at all. It looks, uh, looks great. And uh, hello, of course, to Brian, who's in his car. I love it when he's in his car. That, that gives us the feeling that you can be anywhere these days. With it, it just reminds me of, like, one of those AT&T commercials where somebody's texting while they're driving, and it's going to be a live-action – crash yeah well one day he is going to have an accident and we'll be here to see it so that'll be uh... is that a green screen behind him it's basically it's <laughs> no, a green screen no it yeah. isn't not yet yeah but, like i said the form yeah uh where i can't see mike though where is mike there there he is oh yeah. there he is i see him okay i was trying to figure out what's gotta there. raise his camera a little yeah okay sorry yeah there yeah Lower, yeah, lower, yeah. lower, lower, yeah. whatever. Raise it the other way. It, yeah, low, lower funny. it because your posture is terrible. So, uh, <laughs> is that is that your idea of a raspberry? That weak little thing. Anyway, uh, Bronx cheer. Bronx cheer. <laughs> hey, no, no. Uh, it's more like uh, a Fire Island cheer. Things. What? 
No sound effects, Mike. <laughs> well, natural boy. sound effects are okay. Oh, okay. And, and farts will be accepted. So, you know. Hey, uh, over at Fire Island, is there a fire lake? No. no. I mean, some of there's a fire lake. There's got to be a fire lake. Uh, I was trying to look it up on, on uh, a map because uh, Bob Seger song Fire Lake. And I was thinking, oh, that sounds like it might be a good place to go vacation or something. Because... Um, but I couldn't find it anywhere. Yeah, go out to the, uh, where, where is it, the Pines? Is that the place, Rob? Which is the place where all the gays hang out? On Fire Island? Yeah, is it the Pines? Yep. Yep. And yep. I went out to the Pines Nude once. Beach. And that was something. The Pines was really something. Because it, it's like, you know why I wouldn't want to be gay? Uh, I hate to say this, Brian, uh, but you probably know this already. The ho most horrible thing about being gay is that you really have to work out a lot? Because am I right, Brian? They they, they go for. Um, yeah. You, know, you could say that. Uh, look at it, looking at it more. Boy, wh more why is your Bluetooth? Why is your Bluetooth sounding so tinny tonight? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But, uh, to answer your question, uh, I would argue with a more objective lens in the gig in the gay male community. Unity. Men are objectified by other men, just as women are objectified yeah, by yeah. heterosexual. Men. But I just noticed that I was at a, I was at a restaurant uh, the other day, and at another table was a whole table full of gay guys having lunch. Uh, and I saw one of them was an older guy, and he was still very muscular. He still kept it going, you know. Because yeah, that, that's just a stereotype, just the same as anything else. Because I've met many of big fat gay guys. And well, Bri Brian's not exactly what we call buffed, right, Brian? No, I'm not. Yeah. So, yeah. Gee, I don't know what's wrong with your mic tonight. Usually, it sounds pretty good. Uh, no mic quality. Could be plugged in. It could all. It, 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 no, it could also be that there maybe is a piece of dirt in there or something like that. The trouble with a lot of these mics today is they're just a, they're just a little hole, and and the little hole if it gets even a speck of dirt in it, uh, will you know make you sound crappy, you know. Yeah. Well, don't See, worry. You just sound tinny, and you know usually you sound very good when you're driving. Hey, hey, gay and straight alike, we both like little holes. Yes, we do like little <laughs> holes, right? Yeah. Has anybody seen the? I'm, I am sitting in the in the living room, right? My wife is on Skype in the bedroom. Has anybody seen the uh, the, uh, the the TV commercial for the perfect smile veneers? These things like like comedians would wear. Everybody, it's one size fits all. Yeah. Has anybody seen this commercial? It is the funniest thing in the world. Everybody's smile looks exactly the same. Yeah, but does it work? That's the question. <laughs> when you talk, when you talk, you talk like this. <laughs> I wonder if Djibouti Dubs will do a parody of it. Knows yeah. it you said one size fits all. Will it fit Tony? He's I spending have... all that money on the yeah, Invisalign. On his, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but wait, but I can't understand why your phone. Tonight, usually, your phone in the car sounds good. You know. And tonight it's tinny. Now I don't know. Maybe it isn't plugged in right, or I don't know. But anyway. Uh, so let's see. Trump couldn't get a hotel room. Uh, 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 the beached whale is in trouble. Uh, I don't think he could get reelected in that state now. Well, he's done. This is it. He's not, yeah. He's not, he can't run again. Yeah. He, he's not interested in the Senate. His only real hope is if if Trump ever gets him into a cabinet position. I don't Otherwise, think that, he's done. I don't think that's going to happen. I, didn't I, he turn down a cabinet position before, or was it a last minute they decided not to give him a position? I think that, I'll tell you they, something. They didn't want to let him in the kitchen, near the ki kitchen cabinets, because he'd <laughs> no, take all the food. No, no, no they, they, they make, you're making fat jokes, and that's just, not they, fair. Just like they Giuliani. Yeah. Uh, the reason is, or the same reason Giuliani didn't get something, okay. is because when it came to Goodbye. vetting them and, and going before committees, there was so much bad stuff about them that they, in fact, Giuliani pulled himself out because he didn't want to have to answer a lot of questions that would come up about his life mm. and about his career and about his finances and a lot of things like that. 
uh, and I think the same thing. Yeah, I, I can barely hear you. It's terrible. I don't know what's what's wrong tonight. I know. Alex, I got a question for you. Yeah. What do you, what do you think of that? That uh, the governor of New Jersey closing all the beaches. Well, that's we just talked. There he is. Wait, we and just, there he we, is that uh, fat slob sitting on the beach. Yeah, you don't listen to this show, do you? <laughs> you just call it. I was on the phone. I was oh. on the phone talking to your your friend uh, Travis. Uh, uh, Travis from Florida. He's yeah. not my friend. I saw them a picture of a humpback whale or a blue whale. No, so you, you didn't hear. It was beached. You didn't hear our show, and we already discussed that. For about 15 I, I, was on the phone. I was on the phone. I was on the telephone. I know, talking to another talk show. You're you're a real chronic. No, 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 no. He called me. I, he wasn't even doing this show. Oh, okay. Well, you're, you're a chronic. You know, you call everybody. You call me. You call, you call Jack Bishop. Uh, you just called uh, 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 Damien. I mean, thank God, you know, because, you know, but... Uh, you're a chronic, is what we call you. You better hope you get a few more. <laughs> a few more tonight, yeah. <laughs> I could go for some chronic about now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, Damien says he, he found a script about a, about uh, something about a radio that, shock that jock. Was, that, was a, that was a screenplay I wrote, yes. It was called Shock Radio. He says, we should do a radio play on that, he says. And I quote from him. Yeah, well, uh, it, it, uh, yes, Jason. Did I ever tell you my idea about a movie? N no, but go it ahead. Hi, oh, by like, the way, hello to Jeff, who's joined us. It, it's basically right. like Gabnet, except for like it becomes huge. It becomes so successful, and you know, you become this big, you know, more famous than you ever were before in the past. It's, it's but based on Gabnet, movie, but it's about. Wait a minute, I like what you said. It's based on Gabnet, but it's on about something that's successful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, but I, I at the see. end of the movie, you're in a straight jacket. So it's kind of like, was it real or was it not? <laughs> it's real. But I, I uh, what is that rattling now? Oh, well, that anyway, it's not, that's not you, Jeff, I don't think. I, who knows? You know, we get mysterious sounds every now and then, and I have to find out what they are. Anyway, where was I? Um who stole the strawberries? Oh yeah, so we and I wrote the uh, screenplay, and we uh, I think we actually a few people looked at it, and there was some interest in it. Believe it or not, it's a terrible screenplay. Uh, what is this? Wait a minute. This is I am Juggaloos for LBG to somebody or another. Uh oh. What is this? Who is who is this? So I, so I kind of overhear that, uh, watch the broadcast, my little friend who I introduced to you, Alex is like, oh, oh not, God, here we go. I'm not going to get, I'm not gonna get in the middle of this fight. What fight? I'm not, I'm not your friend. I, We're friends I, on I give up. I uh, 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 if back, friends yeah. on Facebook aren't friends, okay? <laughs> get that straight. Can I ask Travis a question? It, it, I wish they didn't call it friends. I wish they called it like acquaintances or something like that connections yeah now, there's already one show called that hey travis i got a question how come whenever you do uh one of your little live things uh and i i end up getting them it's 70 or 80 percent of it is shot at the floor uh so uh -huh. all, all i see is your floor you have a nice tile floor by the way but, uh, <laughs> and, and this is a guy who should know <laughs> right <laughs> you have you you have not and my shows aren't little shows. You have not watched any of my big uh, some live stream, not live stream, uh, you know, Facebook live, and uh, you you have these things, and then all of a sudden, all you see is the floor, and uh, uh, and and that's it. And you know, it, it's like watching paint dry. I think I might have even made that comment. Well, Mr. that's Fox. not. You must have been looking at the wrong thing because our shows are pretty top notch that was only a small little behind the scenes thing go if you go look at us on youtube or all over the internet we have some very good shit well like alex said i like floors but i was just uh you know uh, you know floors are my life <laughs> yeah you floor me anyway yeah uh, i'm always laying down on the job yeah um you know there were a couple of items last night where did i put them 
I, I had some items that I was going to read last night, and then I never got around to them. Oh, here they are. Oh, that's some Fios. Fuck Fios. Fios. I get more junk mail from Fios who are trying to sell me their goddamn service at this point that I figure that if they didn't mail all those things out, they could give us the service a lot cheaper. You know? No, they're not. But they're spending a fortune. Uh, okay, let's see. A couple items. A couple items, folks. <laughs> There we go. Hey, so did they put the fiber in your building already? Oh, yeah, it's in here. Well, why don't you just get it? Because I've heard... They're not going to give you a cheaper price. I've heard, I know. No, that I'm not. that's not the point. I could probably get away cheaper than I'm getting now with this signature thing that I have with the whole house. Every, I have like six TV sets and, and uh, 300 uh, in and out here or in, out, whatever. Uh, I, but I'm paying 300 and like... $36 a month for that. Now, you know, I could get Fios. I could get 900 megabits a second and then cut the cord kind of and get all these other services that will provide me with stuff. And I added it all up and I probably could save at least $150 a month. But I hear terrible things about Fios. I hear from people who have Fios that they're just a terrible system. You know, Rob used to have it. Didn't I, he? I had no problem with FiOS, um, I, both TV and internet. I never had the phone, and I can't. I have com crap right now, and can't wait to move out of this apartment and get back to FiOS. Oh boy. Okay, well, you know, uh, Spectrum, which is Charter, and they took over uh, uh, our, our uh, Time Warner here, is doing a very <laughs> good job of trying to do good stuff. You know. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking of, I'm thinking of calling them and saying, I'm, I'm thinking of calling them and saying, well, you know, I'm thinking about switching to FiOS. What can you do for me to take this 335 bucks and cut it down? Because I, I have a feeling that when I first started this, I paid what was considered a reasonable amount of money. But now if I were to bundle everything in exactly the same way, it would be cheaper. But you're on old technology of coax. The FiOS, if they put fiber optics in there, it's brand new technology, it's new facilities, you know, it, it's gonna be better. It may be better, but I, I, you know, this isn't exactly terrible. For the most part, I get very good, uh, very good internet uh, connection here. I get 300 uh, download. Do you uh, own your own modem? Uh, no, but I could. Okay, because I was gonna say, because if you, if you change companies, that modem, you'd have to get rid of it because it wouldn't work with Fios. Not necessarily. Uh, no, it I wouldn't don't, work I, with Fios? Oh, it I, wouldn't, right? I don't uh, own the modem, okay? So they'll just bring in another oh, okay. modem. I, I have a uh, Doxus 3 modem, and I, uh, and I have Comcast. But uh, I got a, another Doxus 3 modem for uh, the store because I was trying to get Wave, which is also a uh, used to be a sound, and it's uh, uh, but they they couldn't put into my building for a reasonable amount of money, so I'm ending up with Comcast. But that uh, that same modem would have worked on that fiber. Uh, now, by the way, Travis wave. hung up because we weren't paying attention to him. Go ahead. See him. No, he was going to look at his floor. See, and I don't know how that is with the coax modems, because I do know that our our newer modems that we put in, um, you know, we'll, we'll plug it into <clears throat> for the U-verse. It also does have a port on it to plug into a, a, a what we call the for the fiber. Cat um, six or well, something. Well, well, you got to remember, you got to remember, fiber is only up to your front door. After that, it becomes a cable. You well, know, this so, is fiber to your modem, basically. Well, basically, they, that's not what they're giving us. I mean, I they, thought they wired your building with fiber. They wired my building with fiber, but when it, right. there's a box in the hallway but out not here, to, yeah. Not but to when it apartment. from the box into the apartment, it'll be a it's cable. Cool. In fact, they'll probably use the same cable that uh, Time Warner yeah. installed. Use that fifty foot cord you bought at uh, <laughs> at, at uh, Costco the other day. I the projects that I've been on, it's actually fiber right into the. I apartment. didn't. I didn't buy that at Costco. I went all the way down to Home Depot for that one. Uh, yeah, the evil one. Because I went up to my local hardware store and they only had a hundred feet, and I didn't want a hundred feet. You How know? many amp cord is it? I have no no idea. It's you a, better make sure it's a fifteen amp cord. It's a big thick cord. It's not. It's not just you know a, a normal what, extension. What color cord. is it? 
It's uh, in this case, this one is Jewish. This one's black. Oh. Uh, don't, do you have any paperwork on? You just look to see it, make sure. It's don't a worry. Duty. It's 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 heavy duty. It's it's meant for the kind of thing I'm doing it for. It's meant for the if you hook it up to an air Ooh. conditioner. It's 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 a thick cord. Believe me, I know what I'm just doing. It's thick. It has to be good. No, no, no. I mean, it was it was enough. You know. Has it got what more than one outlet on it so no, that you can plug no. multiple things in? It's just no, one. I just wanted one. I I had to go. What it was is I, it, it, the guy who wired this place wired it so that the bedroom, the the three bedrooms essentially, and then one of these is one of the bedrooms that I'm in. I call it the office. I call it the studio. Uh, but the three bedrooms were all wired to the same fuse. And so if I were running this air conditioner, that air conditioner, and then turned on the coffee machine, I blew the fuse, not in the switch box, but down in the basement. So then, you know, if it was in the middle of the night, there's no way I could get down there. That's so, what's nuts. It seemed like you should have a main feed coming up to your oh, apartment. Of course. But you got to remember, and then, this is an old building. Yeah. Okay. And... and it, it, they'd have to completely rewire it. But anyway, it, the sock, I noticed when that would go out, the one thing that was still on was this socket over in the corner of the dining room. And I could turn on the light and everything worked there. So that was on the second circuit that's downstairs. So what I did is I got a 50-foot extension cord, not the little flimsy extension cord, but a major one-plug extension cord. Am I making sense? Uh, and and, I, and I, I literally put it out of the bedroom and along the wall um, and through the back and in to that, that, that outlet. So now I did it the other day. I turned on the air conditioner and I went and I used the microwave and everything was cool. So. Ghetto rigged it. I rest my, <laughs> I ghetto rigged it. Yes, Absolutely. Yeah. Detroit slash Harlem style. Well, I've, I done, I, I've done more wiring in this house. I mean, I've wired Ethernet cable all the way into the bedroom, all the way into the second bedroom, so that uh, uh, we we can get just a really good solid signal on all the you know all the internet stuff because the walls are so thick here that the Wi-Fi, while it probably could reach there, I, I, I didn't want to do that. Yeah, it, it it doesn't do well through plaster. Yeah, it works well through uh, you know regular sheetrock and such, but like my in in I found that out in the Philippines at Wi-Fi, but all the walls are concrete, yet no <laughs> Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, and and so I I I did it, and uh, it's 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 fine, you know, it's good, and and um, then in the bedroom, I also with the with the Ethernet that I hooked in, I hooked it into a repeater a strong repeater that I bought. And then that takes care of the rest of the house with Wi-Fi. So, you know, it's cool. I done good. I wired like crazy, you know. But, well, I get a outdoor repeater to put on my back deck because now that I redid it, we're yeah. out there all the time and freaking the Wi-Fi doesn't go through the brick of my house for nothing. Yeah. Uh, tell, uh, by the way, yeah. by the way, Mike, are you there, Mike? I think you lost Mike and yeah. uh, and uh, uh, and what's his name, Brian. Yeah. Uh, no, Brian's there. there. Brian's oh, there. Still there. Oh, he's just got a dark picture. I, I just uh, I just pulled in, so let me see. I mean, that's yeah. Oh, uh, uh, Mike, are you there? Are you there, Mike? I think he went away with Runkle. Let me get let me get rid of him. Okay. Yeah, they're cleaning the floor now. now huh? that the, you know. <laughs> Well, you know, I can always, uh, uh, I don't know what happened. Oh, did you got Ray Brian too? Hmm? No, he's no, going no, no, he, no, he hung he's going up home because he's going home. Yeah. Here I can call, I, 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 I can call Mike back. Let's see if he answers and find out what the hell happened to him. Um, no, he's not answering. So, you know, Alex know. is cleaning. Uh, Alex is what? Cleaning the building right now. It, it, cleaning the building? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there there we go. There yeah. you are, Mike. Yeah, I'm on another. No, I don't even I got in an argument with somebody, so I 
decided not to talk to Ryan's dad. You're an asshole. Goodbye. Click. Who were who were they that you called an asshole? Oh, some idiot. <laughs> he goes up about once a month, gives me hell about something. Oh, really? Yeah. Sounds, so you're a flake. So yeah, I told me he's a flake, so get the hell out of my life. Oh, yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> Yeah. So anyway, um, be a flake. Let me just add a few items that I that I that I got for last night, and then I didn't read them last night. You know, Kathy Griffin is being interrogated by the Secret Service. Oh boy. What? Yeah. For what? Ridiculous. For the head. For the head. The oh. Bull the bloody head. Kathy Griffin was reportedly grilled for more than an hour by U.S. Secret Service agents in connection with that stunt about a month ago involving a mock-up of a bloody silvered head of Donald Trump. Now, that's the biggest audience she's had in years. We, of, of <laughs> course, but a vulture reports that according to political reporter Yashir Ali, the federal agency interviewed Griffin in person and the investigation into Griffin remains open. Now, let me ask you a question. <laughs> There are a lot of threats to our government, to our president, to our democracy. Not enough. It, it, <laughs> is it, it, do we really have to send the Secret Service out to interview Kathy Griffin? It's the best thing that can happen to her. No, 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 that, no, no, no. I'm not saying it's the best thing that can happen to her. And, uh, I'm saying, and I'm saying, it, I'm saying, the it's the worst thing that could happen to us because they're wasting our fucking money. True. Well, well one way to look at it, what else would these people do? Huh? Yeah. What else would they do? Yeah. Yeah. It's a conspiracy. It's, you know? It, uh, what they do is sit in their office, drink coffee, and say, well, who could we pick on next? <laughs> they got a list about so long. They go through the list. Yeah. Yeah. So, so watch it. You might be on the list next. You know, and, and sp sp speaking of Mika and. Uh, Joe uh, and Scarborough. Joe Scarborough. Uh, after the highly public war of words on Twitter <clears throat> last week between Donald Trump and co-hosts of MSNBC's Morning Joe, the show reached the largest audience in its history on Friday. I almost blew that one for you. <laughs> yeah, well, you always do. Uh, it, you know, uh, it's interesting that Trump, who you know, wanted to get at them by writing these tweets actually benefited them. Uh, you know, so this is how stupid Trump is. You know, if Trump doesn't like somebody, if they do, he does something like this, it's only going to give them publicity. You know, in the case of Kathy Griffin, it wasn't a tweet. He didn't tweet about her. She did something and it, uh, you know, it, it got... Uh, Created a lot of problems, but uh, oh, my my son has uh, has nightmares over that still. Well, good. Uh, who who which son? Uh, Baron. Oh, yeah. Fuck Baron. <laughs> yeah. Fuck him. That was the name of my German Shepherd when I was a kid. Yeah. What's the name of your cat, by the way? There's a cat, ladies and gentlemen, on our show. You know, the one thing about Brian is he brings to this show visual stuff. He's Is driving he down little? the street. Food. He's got a kitty cat. <laughs> My eyes aren't slanty enough for that. Yeah. Uh, it's a stray I found. Oh, it's a stray? Yes, actually. Oh, really? But aren't you usually eating at that time? You're not going to eat the cat, are you? <laughs> <laughs> not unless I do this. <laughs> Boy, our, our viewership and listenership this week has been slow. Why do you think that Holiday is? Holiday week. Do you think it's the holiday week plus people are going on vacation? Oh, really? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> work is dead. Everything's dead. Oh, Traffic's really? been great on my way to work. Well, it's kind of like Except a half a week. It, though. Yeah, kind of half a week. Oh, well. You know, I, I heard that they want sound effects, and that's why they're not tuning in. I see. <laughs> Could I be. See. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, you know, I, I, because I've been getting a little, I've been getting a little frustrated by this this week. Some weeks it's really good, and some weeks it's, you know. So I'm glad I'm going away tomorrow, you know. Oh, tomorrow is when Jack's going to. Jack will do the yeah. show, and I hope you'll all call him and, you know, and Amy, I think, is going to do it with him. And you can call in the first half hour because he won't have a, uh, a pre-recorded thing. Well, I don't have a pre-recorded thing on Friday. No, but, uh, well, you have a shtick. 
But, uh, you know, if he's going to be on, he'll start his... What did you just call Marjorie? Shtick. Shtick. Yeah, he got shtick. So is that a kitty you took in, uh, Brian? Temporarily. Let's see what happens. Oh, it, it, it looks Find like... Somebody. The cat looks like he... She li Is it she or he? I believe it's a, a, a female. You can't tell? <laughs> I don't really make it a point to look. Well, no, but <laughs> the, the, I, if, with cats, you don't have to make it a point to look. They'll be happy to show it to you or even sit there licking them. Do they? Does she sit when she pees, or does she stand? I don't know. I haven't seen her do that yet. Does I, she, like I said, I does she complain her. about you leaving the toilet seat up? You found her yesterday, and she's that friendly. So it's it's obvious. No, no, it's unusual. He found her at the neighbor's house. Of the <laughs> Dart the other way. At yeah, I, absolutely. That's not a feral cat. That's that's a cat used to being around humans. Yeah, well, I, I, you know, I mean, uh, like, for instance, uh, yeah, girlfriend and I just uh, ha got a child. Uh, they they somehow give them away at the supermarkets in carts. It's uh, very unusual. Uh, oh, children. There. They even have wheels. But anyway, their ratings went up. The Nielsen Company said Wednesday that 1.66 million people... Watched MSNBC's morning show the day after the tweets that narrowly beat the show's previous record, which came out the day after Trump was elected last year. But what Fox show did they beat? Uh, I believe it was, uh, the, you know, what's that morning Fox show? Uh, Fox, Fox, Fox and Friends. Fox, 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 Fox and Friends. Yeah. I think they beat yeah. him by 100,000. Steve Douchey still co-hosts that. Yeah. I like Douchey. That's a good name. Uh, that's what I call them. Uh, yeah. Uh, they are the three biggest idiots I've ever seen. <laughs> now, who is she? What's her name used to be do, used to do that show, but she's not doing it now, is she? Who's that? Uh, the woman who started out on Survivor and then wound up on The View. Huh? You know who I'm talking about? Bleach bitch. You know who I'm talking uh, about? Hassel, Hasselbeck, something like ha that? Hasselbeck, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Oh, Elizabeth Hasselbeck. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, one piece of news. Is she you know, still on uh, Fox and Friends, or is she not on no. Fox and Friends? Uh, uh, did you know your friend Patton got engaged today? He did? Yeah. No, is she still on Fox and Friends, or is she... Really? Yeah. Oh, well, congratulations to him. I wish I had an address on him. I'd write him and congratulate him. Probably get him on Facebook or something. Yeah. No, you can't. No, no. Now, when you get go to a Facebook page you, and you write something, there are thousands of people that write stuff there. It's very hard to get a hold of something that way. I'm trying to get a hold of Patton because I know if he if he knew I wanted him on the show, he'd do it. You know, I just got to find him. Um, you know how you, you you see a video and then all of a sudden you flip up and there's another video. Yeah. There was a video of Patton Oswald and Howard Stern. Talking about. It's, by the uh, way, it's the not Oswald. That, it's Oswald. Oswald. Uh, 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 he didn't shoot Kennedy. Uh, anyway, um, uh, who's the comedian that smashes the watermelons? Oh, that's uh, uh, Gallagher. 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 Yeah. Uh, all right. So uh, at first, I watched a, a, a thing on Gallagher, and he was uh, putting down all sorts of other comedians. But he did uh, he did verify what you had said that. Uh, uh, Robin Williams steals material. Uh, and, uh, he does uh, and no, that, no. Robin does not anymore. steal material any longer. Anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it was an older interview. But a a anyway, uh, then uh, between uh, Howard Stern and Patton Os Oswalt, uh, they uh, they were ripping apart um, uh, Gallagher, Gallagher because uh, he doesn't have an act. <laughs> and, uh, you know, well, he does. It was an he interesting does. interview. Uh, but, but Gallagher was, am and Rob will remember this too, it was amazingly successful yeah. as a comedian. But then again, so is Yakov Smirnov. <laughs> what a country. Yeah. Uh, he wound up having the Yakov Smirnov Theater in Branson, Missouri. And well, made kind of, uh, kind of fucking... contemptible how much food that man wasted with the watermelon bits. 
I mean, it's uh, like the last refuge of somebody who can't get by with their own wit right, and their and own charm. So they I have to resort because, to something as base as that to, he, you know, garner a cheap laugh. Yeah. Because of the watermelons, he says he doesn't get any blacks in his audience. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> says, oh, says, 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 I can't says, believe that you just Jamaican. pulled a racist joke. I know I repeated Gallagher's. Uh, well, I did a racist thing. joke earlier. I, the, uh, I doubt Gat Gallagher ever said that. I, I, he said it, you know, which is calling me a liar and a racist. <laughs> yes, you're a liar and a racist, okay? <laughs> hey. And I make fun of everybody, especially myself. Oh, by the way, you want to hear how my life is going lately? You know, I had this bad knee that tore meniscus. Yesterday it was killing me because I slept the wrong way and it did whatever it did, and I was in pain all day from it. Okay, mm -hmm. haven't had pain in a long time. So last night I put a pillow between my legs, right, to kind of cushion it. I wake up this morning, the leg is perfect. No pain. The pain is gone, but my buttocks and my bones ache all over the place. And I think it's because it threw my body out of alignment or something. Yes. Jason. See, I do that with a full body pillow. That's great. I was just yeah. going to say, there's those pregnancy pillows or a full body <laughs> pillow or whatever. Yeah. Those are, I, in the summertime, I need to have stuff between my legs, and usually I have to ball the blankets up. But and, and your wife won't. Your, your, your wife. Your wife won't. Your wife won't. You did. Don't you have a kid? Your wife won't yeah. do it for you. <laughs> uh, no. Especially now she's gone. But like I said, I use a, her old pregnancy <laughs> pillow. Man, I slept like a baby. Wow. You well, know. Anyway. Anyway. I, so this thing threw my body out and now the knee is fine but every other bone in my my buttocks hurts from it you know so maybe it wasn't that maybe mattress. brian stuck over in the middle of the night it could be could be uh, i i my mattress just finally gave it up you it's wish like 13, 14 <laughs> years old yeah and uh now all of a sudden there's there's a spot where where i sleep and when i sleep i sleep on my back i could put a glass of water on my stomach and i'd wake up in the morning and the water would still be there I remember we, we, yeah. we used to do shows uh, once a year from my bedroom yeah. at, uh, at Live 105. And then we would invite people over and they'd all get in bed with me and we'd you know, do the interviews and stuff. And Jerry Springer, I have a picture of Jerry Springer sitting on the edge of my bed, stuff like that. Okay. Well, we had this uh, sports reporter. I'm trying to remember his name right now. Um, but he was from the Chronicle. Great sports reporter. Scott, uh, uh, Scott, uh, no. Scott, you? No. No? No. But anyway, he um, <laughs> he sat on the edge of the bed and completely broke it because he was overweight. <laughs> and he just completely no, broke it. And he wasn't that fat, but I felt terrible for him because what an embarrassing thing. You sit on the edge of somebody's bed and it collapses. <laughs> it's embarrassing. It is? You, you know it. Uh, uh, let's see here. Oh, NPR was attacked for its 4th of July tweet. <laughs> Morons. Um, uh, uh, uh. Billy Bob broke back butt fuckers. Who NPR the, came uh... under attack Tuesday, especially from supporters of Donald Trump, according to a media report, after it marked the 4th of July holiday by sending out a declaration of independence line by line on Twitter. Some of the founders' criticisms of King George III were met with angry responses from supporters of President Donald Trump, who seemed to believe the tweets were a reference to the current president. How do they get uh, the Declaration of Independence in 140 words, the characters? Well, they just successively. That's what Trump does sometimes, you know. Hey, Alex, it, what? do you know how many times, how many years they've done that? Yeah. Do they do this every year? Oh, yeah. He's like I was on the Young Turks. I've been doing this. Well, if yeah. one of them said incredible, you may be on the wrong side of history if you think the uh, uh, hashtag Declaration of Independence is describing hashtag Trump and then call it trash. Yes. Uh -huh. See how much they know? Well, that's my news for tonight. That was the prep I did. So. Was that your Lynn Samuels prep sheet? That's my Lynn Samuels prep sheet. You're I right. suppose the only way you could beat that act is if you took that paper and wiped your ass with it on camera. You, know, you should have saved it for the Alex Bennett archives. Really? You know, uh, you know papers and tapes. The one, the one that Damien is starting. 
they, yeah. Damien's going through my stuff and finding stuff I don't remember I ever had. But you've been paying for it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I finished. I finally finished paying off the storage locker today. They, they granted me that because I had been with them such a long time that they weren't going to charge me a prorated charge for the days extra that I was in storage. And then I said, how much is the... Uh, uh, the junker going to cost the guy to come and take it away, and they said, "Well, they already did." And I said, "Okay, how much?" They said, "One hundred and seventy-five dollars." I gave him my credit card, and now I'm through with that fucking place. Wow! I so ended I'm, it up the other day. I was just averaging like over the years, probably two fifty for is there two twenty-five or two fifty? Well, it started out. It, it started out seven thousand dollars. What? <laughs> Wow. Thirty-seven thousand dollars you probably paid them. Let me see yeah, here. It started it started a hundred it started hundred and thirty eight. And that's why I averaged about two twenty five or two fifty. Uh, yeah, that might be and then it wound up the last time I didn't go to it, but this month it was gonna be three hundred and seventy one dollars. And now Ouch. you're just throwing money away paying for a gym membership they've never set foot in. Well, yeah, but that's only fifty it's only ten dollars <laughs> a month. Hey, I, I tell you what, why don't you just send me that money? Okay. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> you can go to the gym. Well I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm getting rid of live stream. I, I tell you what, you send me that money, you're welcome yeah. to my house anytime you want. You just come right in and do whatever you want. I, I'm getting rid of live stream <laughs> this month. So there's forty nine bucks, forty nine ninety five right there. <laughs> So uh, you know, I'm I'm looking to economize. So maybe you're right. I probably should quit the gym that I never go to. <laughs> but you know, when hey, it's just go once. When it's only like a hundred and sixty, hundred seventy dollars a year, you go, eh, hey, what the fuck? What what are you gonna say, uh, Mike? What what gym does Jay Mark belong to? Damien says that you got all your stuff in your uh, to the new locker storage mm -hmm. and the rocking chairs on the floor. We were laughing about the rocking chairs. Is what we were wondering. We stuck a camera there. Someone opens up that door. The air pressure from the uh, locker. Yeah. From the outside, watch that thing move, rock back and forth. Really? Watch this. That would be kind of funny to watch. I wish I, there were a way I could get that out here. Uh, the thing, my father's uh, music, uh, where he kept his uh, sheet music, that thing. Uh, I think we're going to get shipped out here because Marjorie really wants that. It's a very nice piece. You, know. you probably put both pieces on the same pallet. On the same on the same now, pallet. Now is that rock is that yeah. rocking chair maple? I don't know what it is. It's not a great rocking chair, but it it's sentimentally to me. There was a desk I got rid of that was kind of sentimental to me, but I I didn't ever find it uh that it, sentimental. Uh, that sentimental. <laughs> but the rocking chair is and my father's music sheet music chest is uh and i you know i don't know when i'm going to get them out of here out here i'll probably be dead before they ever get out here but you know i told them i wanted to save that so all we left we left some great desks in there i wish somebody could have picked them what up what kind of them. desks they i used them for the i used them when we were doing play tv and uh, they were de there, there were four of them there was two two long ones, and then one that went this way, so that I could make a U, have a U, and then uh, had all the the equipment for sending it on one side, and then this place where people would sit when I'd interview them, and so on on the other side. And in the back, we had a hollow screen so that I could do a a really good uh, uh, green screen where I had the background was. In fact, you if you go uh, to uh, I think if you go to the TV part of uh, of uh, uh, Roku, uh, there actually is the Play TV show there, and you can see what it looked like. It was pretty amazing, actually, to be really honest with you. Now, uh, I saw that recently. Uh, you were on the particular show that you have up. Yeah. You did an interview with uh, Esther... Oh, he, he, that beautiful Asian... Yeah, she was the assistant to... Uh, the mayor of San Francisco. Mayor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful yeah. girl. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. And uh, that's the show. Uh, you know, I actually, if I had a, a copy of it right here just now, I could probably play it for you. But you know, uh, I can't. Oops. You know what I'm going to have to do? I'm going to have to bring people out here and make this bigger. 
Uh, let me see here. Let me do a little. Oh, you want me to hang up? That's okay. No, 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 no. Got a full no, no. House, I know I'm a latecomer here to the party. You have a full no, house? No, no, no. I know we have a full house. Ten people, more. including Alex. We have um, uh, nine. an overflow crowd. Let's see here. Nine I've people. Got, I've got to. I've got to get. Excluding through. Alex, it's nine. Four. I see here. Let me that, do that's this. That's eight, eight, nine. This in. Yeah. There we go. Now, What's out? Chop liver? Uh, I, I'm trying to get everybody in. That, uh, well, I'm, it I'm, depends I'm, on what you constitute a full house. If it's nine, well, including yeah. Alex. And, yeah. yeah, that's that's what it is. <clears throat> it's you got ten, ten, but it's ten. ten. Yeah. Hold, hold on a second. I'm going to get him in this picture yet. There we go. He's in, the, he's in my picture. I, I got huh? him all. Yeah, but he's not on the, the Facebook. Feed. Oh, yeah, oh. but he will be as soon as I go. But um, there he is. See, there's John at the very top, folks. Oh. How, how many people do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten with me. And we could take one more. You know, we could take two more. Could take we, two or three more. Yeah. But, What's uh, this about, about getting uh, getting furniture out here from the West Coast or what? Yeah, Is yeah. that what you were talking about? Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah so. we, could, we could use better furniture in the Midnight Blue days. But we're, well, actually, we're, it, was, it wasn't bad. You know, I don't know, where do we get all that stuff from? Was that stuff that was left over at, in Screw Magazine's headquarters or something? The, uh, I don't remember where, where, where we got all the, you know, the, um, I mean, we made our own set design sort of thing, but yeah. the editing uh, uh, desks and all that, were they there? Uh, or, uh, that I don't remember. Because we, we took over what was part of the art department, I think, right? Where the printing or something was. Oh, you was, mean upstairs you know, which, where we were. Well, down, I was thinking of the downstairs. Oh, when yeah. they're oh, on yeah. the 11th floor. Yeah, that yeah. was. Uh, yeah, but then down on the fourth floor, we took over the studio or space that actually had studio or, or had originally been a studio, right? Was it, uh, it yeah. one of the old record companies from the 50s? It wasn't Electra, but it was someone like that yeah. before Goldstein got in there. Because oh, it, it actually was, had studio windows. You, you know, know what it was? It was Sire Records, I think. I, or I something, or something, like, something that. like that, but it was from like the '60s or something originally, and we, yeah. and so it really actually was a sort of a space where you actually had a little bit of quiet because there were big windows, but they were the double pane type that were designed to not echo, you know, a little bit, and uh, yeah, that was yeah. Sort of, that was really nice. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you felt like you were actually in a studio instead of uh, in the same in the same group as a bunch of editors and photo photo guys going through uh, naked pictures of, yeah. of girls. By yeah. the way, you know what I like about this when we get this many people on? My picture can be huge now. Oh. Instead of just over in the corner, just a little bit. In the bit. corner, yeah. So. Well, uh, got, yeah. Uh, Paul McCartney. I've got you and Rob in half and half here, so, you know, yeah, I can right. switch it around, I suppose. Uh, Rob, yeah. Uh, didn't Paul I, McCartney today uh, get back all the rights to uh, his uh, the Beatles songs? Really? I don't, yeah, I don't know. They're, they were owned by uh, Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. Yeah. Right? Well, I guess Paul McCartney owns them now. Uh, that's what I read this morning. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, he's been trying to do that for years. Well, it's, so, it, so the estate of Michael sold them to him. I'm not sure. I, I didn't see that in the article. Just it was a headline. Well, Michael's last words was not over my dead body. <laughs> yeah, he didn't want to sell them to him. Yeah. No, he wouldn't drink the Jesus juice. Well, I just put in Paul, oh, a little too old Paul for McCartney. Days. Let me put news here. Paul McCartney, no. No. Nope. Michael Jackson, one of the nope. gone uh, uh, magical mystery tour, a 63-year-old cocker wasn't, wasn't on his, uh, on his no, list. itinerary. Oh, oh it, it was a Beatles songwrite dispute mm -hmm. that he was having with Sony. They reached a settlement over copyright to the Beatles catalog, avoiding a legal battle. McCartney filed a lawsuit in January in the U.S. court to secure rights from Sony TV Publishing. Uh, Michael Jacobs, a lawyer for McCartney, late last week informed the judge the two sides have resolved the matter and are entering into a confidential settlement agreement. So... Uh, it, it, the case revolves around the U.S. Copyright Act 1976, I mean, which aimed to strengthen the hand of songwriters whose relationship with music publishers who hold rights and distribute royalties has been notoriously rocky. 
Under the act, songwriters could reclaim copyright from music publishers 35 years after they gave them away or 56 years for songs before 1978. So it's all part of that. They made some kind of agreement. Uh, so Sony, Sony owned the rights? Sony, uh, owned, uh, Sony owned and still owns the rights, but there's been a settlement. Oh, what, where, where was Michael Jackson in this? Dead. <laughs> I know, but I, <laughs> he owned the uh, the package of songs. It, it could very it's well so, be that that he, he may have actually sold the rights it, earlier. Yes, Jason. To Sony. Well, well, you were just reading. Does that basically were you saying that you could sell your rights to your music, but then so many years later you can just automatically get it back if you wanted to? And that after so many years you can get them back. Yeah. Is that like that twenty-five-year rule or something? Yeah, like a copyright, yeah. copyright rule or something. Yeah, yeah. twenty-six Don't years. Sell it, at least. Book copyright. Yeah, well, copyright lasts for the life of the. Uh, I believe yeah, now for yeah, the life right of there. the uh, of the author. So yeah. there's no more such thing as public domain. Uh, oh, really? oh, it is after you die. I mean, uh, there is. I mean, well, wait a minute. Author. If uh, Elvis is oh, no. dead, but his his. His stuff's not in public well, domain. It, the in, states it, can renew copyright. Well, wait a minute. They're in public domain if you failed to copyright them. Mm -hmm. uh, I if, thought, like, you know, you were talking... I know I've heard it mentioned many times that you can show a movie that's old beyond a certain point because they're in public domain. Yes Is, and no. Uh, let me give you an example of public domain. What was a big movie? The first 19 episodes of Star Trek are in public domain because the uh, Paramount forgot mm -hmm. to copyright them. <laughs> Oops. However, the way they keep people from using them is they did copyright the music. Ah. So yeah, aren't, the, aren't the characters, movie. though, aren't the characters copyrighted? No. Nah. The likenesses of the characters? It, all I'm saying is that those first, I know those first 19 episodes, and I knew a guy who was actually distributing those 19 episodes, and uh, Paramount sent him a cease and desist order that, you know, they're violate, he was violating copyright, <clears> and he wrote him back and say, I will cease and desist when you can supply me with a copyright notice. And that was the last he heard from Paramount. You know, but I mean, a lot of old films, um, um, you know why it's, it's a wonderful life. life why it wound up on television every year, why it became so popular as a Christmas movie, because it wasn't in copyright. So every station could go out and get every shitty copy uh, that they could lay their hands on and mm -hmm. and play it and not have to pay anybody for the right to use it. And that's why it became so popular. Otherwise, I think it's a shitty movie. Yeah, it isn't that great of a movie. Yeah. <laughs> but, that, yeah. but, 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 later on, Republic somehow was able to copyright It's a Wonderful Life, I think, again, using the music as the reason for the copyright. And now you have to buy it in order to play it on you. And that's why NBC plays it every year and has an exclusive <laughs> yeah, I think they have an exclusive on, it. on it, don't but, they? But for years, every TV station in America was running It's a Wonderful Life on Christmas yeah. Eve, you know. Yeah, what, uh, yes, uh, uh, John. Yeah, uh, I, when I was working at this recording studio back in the 70s or 80s and 90s, uh, and even a little bit later, I was there quite a while, but the owners of the studio used to, around Halloween, would yeah. be able to send out to radio stations uh, a copy of Orson Welles' The War of the Worlds. And I said, well, you're going to have the... The right to it, so we have as many much right to it as anyone else. And they also had they were they had been involved in putting together a two record set back in the sixties of whoever from whoever it was that had the original, you know, if there was a copyright on it. And so they had the most complete version of it and they were able to syndicate it and even though they had no connection with with right. RKO or whatever the I mean not RKO, but I mean the, the radio uh the original radio version and of course everybody you know still loves to play that on you know talk station whatever we'll play it on mm. on on halloween because it's a classic um program yeah. we also had he also for some reason though uh, at one point or another one of the people that that lived in uh, my boss's uh they she had a duplex apartment she ran it out was a woman and and they put on the on the on the on the doorbell a state of a state of sir arthur conan doyle 
Yeah. And this was back in the 70s. You're thinking Conan Doyle, when well, he died like about in 1920 or something, Sherlock Holmes was all 1890. But, you know, for some reason or another, people would call my boss up. And I think, I don't know whether the, the woman that was there originally passed it over to her, but Joan had a complete set of like Conan Doyle books and everything like that. She was involved with the... Uh, Baker Street Irregulars version. So somehow, I mean, the question with whether there was anything that she people did occasionally would would call her up and try to get some sort of right. She said, "I'm not really sure what I, I can think." Tell. I think they. I think you can use Sherlock Holmes if you're making a film, uh, because mm -hmm. I don't think Sherlock Holmes is in copyright. Oh, the character himself. That's I mean, why, that, obviously, because yeah, yeah, there's so many rip -off, or you, not rip -offs, so many versions and things. <laughs> yeah, you know, both in both in print, the yeah. character. But I'm talking like. I mean, but what we, you know, these were like, but there were people who wanted to use the original Hound of but, the Baskervilles. But, 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 but you don't, know, fu don't Nick. fuck, don't fuck with Peter Pan. Oh yeah. Because okay. Peter Pan is owned. Barry gave the rights to Peter Pan to a children's hospital in London, and that children's yeah, hospital still have just it. oh they 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 you know. They, so I have Disney now. Huh? I thought Disney had it. Yeah. Disney. I Disney, had Disney Peter bought Pan. the rights. To use uh, yeah, but, to use it, yeah, yeah. But that you know, was... you know, Alex, if they still have the old BMI cops, remember the guys that ran around looking for people playing stuff in bars and that sort of thing. Yeah, uh, I, I knew that. He, well, the friend he, who did that, who did that part time, he would listen and report people. Well, you see, yeah, it, I, it, I friend, friend, it, and, and they had every and they had every right to do it. They weren't being spoil yeah, sports. I mean, people were playing music in clubs. And yeah. not paying for the rights to use that music, oh. and then I you know they were charging they, they, they were charging people. Things. Yeah, but they yeah, were. My, my, I, I had a friend that uh, used to go into uh, retail stores, and if they were playing the music, he he was a BMI yep. cop. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. Well, and that's they, why Muzak was so popular. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Do they still do that? I don't. I don't. Well, Muzak, I think, I think they still do. I think it's all digital now. But yeah, I think Sirius has most of that business. They, you know, it's just easy enough to get a, a satellite thing and and uh, you know. But didn't, didn't they have yeah, but I think I think if you play business. if you play Sirius in your, I don't know if you were to play Sirius in your bar, okay. And, you had and to have pay a for it. You, you, and There's a certain subscription that you yeah. buy. It's like oh, cable, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. But yeah. it was easy enough to just buy a radio and not do it. That's why I thought that they had their own cops, too. Or whatever my, to yeah, my dentist did that. He, he played serious over his little intercom system. Well, you know, I don't think they're going to bust. All of a sudden, he didn't. <laughs> you know, I mean, what, but what <laughs> they... you subscribe to Pandora or something? That's no, for a while, for a while they, they really went after these, these bars and so on. To put them on notice that hey, you know, you got to pay for this stuff. People yeah. wrote it. This is how people make a living, you yep. know. And uh, you should not, uh, you know. So they they got I real. They got. It's like it's like the uh, the happy birthday song. Oh yeah. Well, that that's, finally that's didn't that finally game. yeah didn't that finally get straightened out? I think you can. Or maybe you the can, little old ladies can, uh, that owned the uh, yeah. rights. I, I'm, I'm, no, the rights. The rights were on, I'm at, I, or something. I, I'm trying to remember like who. Who owned the right? It's public domain now. No, I'm trying to remember who owned the rights to Happy Birthday. It was uh, like two little old ladies. Can, but I guess. it was, was a writer, writer, a daughter, I, I, a writer. I, I, or something. Am I mistaken, yeah. or might it have been Rob Paul McCartney that he eventually yeah. owned the rights to it? Oh, I don't know about that, but I know that you could you couldn't sing it the way it was written. But if you altered it one way or another, like at the restaurants and stuff like that, you could get away with it. Yeah. Well, those guys that come up to your table. It's owned by Warner Chapel Music. There you go. It, it is there owned by Warner Chapel Music. Yeah. Yeah. They purchased it for $25 million bucks back in 1988. Ooh. Okay. Well, I, I, thought know, they, I, thought, I thought they went to court on that. And finally they said, okay, the court said, Public domain. Well, you know How something. You that? I, I paid twenty-five million for it. How could you call it public domain? Yeah, but you may have <laughs> they paid. Called it, they called it. They, I don't know what they did. They went to court. The people went to court on that. You know, and they said that it was public more domain. There, there was something that was just in the news about it, like in the last two years. Well, but, but here, yeah. Here, yeah, here, very here, recently, yeah. Here's, the, here's, the, here's the argument against it, and why they would probably win in court, is that that song was so 
in, it, it, it was a specific version the, of the, Happy the, Birthday. Well, the use is, of it, yeah, but the use of it is so prevalent oh, man. everywhere that I think there's almost a common public domain on that. I'm going to ask my friend it's Shecky because Shecky it, it, is the it, is the expert on this. I do remember it people actually, saying, "Listen, what we can play now," and they started playing Happy Birthday. Yeah, it actually says that both uh, the uh, the music and the lyrics are now in public domain. The copyright expired in the European Union on January 1st of this year. In the United States, a federal court ruled in 2016 that Warner Chappell's copyright claim was invalid and that there was no other claim to copyright. Bingo! Okay, there you go. Did, he have to, did, did they get the $25 million back? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Any, any of you guys it? have a birthday? We can well, all sing all along. I know is, right, I, is, right, is, right. is just last mine, week. Not, mine was June, so. Just last week, I copyrighted the Star Spangled Banner. There you go. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> Oh, we're going to go to court on that, Alex. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and if that but, fucking Trump uses it one more time at an inauguration, <laughs> I'm going after him. There you go. But I think, like, what's his name was saying about Mercury Theater? I think Mercury Theater, whoever owned Mercury Theater, I don't know if it was, you know, well, uh, I mean, CPS. Well, it, it was, it was uh, the Mercury Theater on, of the air, with yeah, right. uh, with uh, Orson, Orson Welles, Welles, who every Orson week Welles. did a different drama or play or whatever, and that happened to be what they did on Halloween. Uh, exactly. Yeah, uh, and I but, think it was owned by CBS, though. I think it was one of those things where the network. I think they owned lost everything. the copyright. It's so old. They said, "Well, it was put in the public domain to let people enjoy it," because mm. that wasn't good. That was a classic. Well, it used to be well, that. Studio, it, yeah, copyright. Our studio was one of the. Yeah. few ones that actually had a complete version with all the commercials and everything. You know, a lot of times it got cut down because it was over. It was an hour long, and uh, so we were able to market it to radio stations that wanted to run the whole thing. But you're right. I mean, there were versions. You could buy a record disc. You know, it was like about 30 minutes long of 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 most of the of the thing. I don't know why they cut it. I, you know, I worked at a radio station in 1980 and 81. Where we ran at 10 p.m. every or midnight, I think it was every night. The Mutual Radio Theater it was a radio play, mm -hmm. and it was on a disc. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Was and that were those were those original, uh, or were they were they re brought you know re? They may have been remastered or pressed uh, if you you know to syndicate them uh, again. I mean, they they were most likely taken from. Back then, if, if they were originally done like in the 50s or something like that, they might have been discs back then, too, because it was, you know, real, real tape was sort of was still pretty new. And that and discs were a lot cheaper. Some of the syndicated stuff that my studio used to do these little, you know, uh, 20, 20 little two minute shows a month sort of thing. We would press them into records because it was a lot cheaper than sending out a big reel of tape to everyone. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, yeah, they probably but back then. They did, you know. They they recorded they recorded it while it was run live on the East Coast, and then played it, you know, again the recording three hours later for the West Coast. <laughs> no, uh, actually, I, they, they actually yeah, actually in the old days they weren't exactly able to do it that way. They would have to play it about a week later or several days later because the disc had to get from New York out to the west coast where it was then disseminated across the network out there yeah. uh, uh also so they had no real network well, connections the network i think could go live across the entire country in those days but the quality wasn't that great you know mm -hmm. because uh later on they they built the microwave relay system that then allowed them to take a signal and do it live across the united states and it sounded good but the best sound you could get is if they sent you the disc from New York. And that must have been very exciting to be around during that time when those things were – radio first came around and television. Because today, none of it is really – like, who cares? Well, here's what, it, it. here's what was exciting yeah. about – I would have liked to have been – what I said was I was glad I was here for the beginnings of the Internet – because I would have liked to have been around when radio started. I was alive when television started, but I wasn't old enough to be in it. 
and that the beauty of being able to be there at the beginning of radio or the beginning of television is you could invent the medium. There was, you couldn't, it it was very hard to establish what the medium was. And some people played around with it and you could play around with it. That's why you got a guy like Ernie Kovacs who did some very original stuff using the medium itself to do the comedy, you know? So uh, uh, it would have been wonderful to be around at that time. I think so, But too. unfortunately, I came along too late for any of that, but I wasn't too late for the Internet. And that's why... But the in, Internet never turned out to be a moneymaker like well, radio and TV were. Well, yeah, but in 1997, no. that's when... Uh, 19, well, excuse me, 1998-99 is when we started Play TV, which was the first literal internet television network uh and we could play around with what we did with it you know we could help to define the medium and that's a big thrill when you can help define a medium yeah you know all i ever did in radio when i was in san francisco and phil will remember this is i simply tried to bring back old radio the way it had been with a studio audience and with pictures of the mind, you know, and things like that. Yep. But, uh, you know, Hey Jeff, you've been quiet tonight. And, uh, and Jason's been quiet, even though he's been, he's, he's, he's living it up because his wife isn't home. (laughs) Yeah. Unfortunately, I got some competitive talking in the house. Competitive. I'm trying to keep it off. Competitive talking. (laughs) <laughs> is it my wife's talking is that is that, a, a lot, is that a new game you play competitive talking <laughs> yes. yes yes mike i am one of the collectors also radio old radio show collectors and i have a big collection of old radio shows and one of them is war with the worlds and no, i got war to of the, the commercials worlds. with the commercials and everything else with it I just sat down the other day playing that on real to real tape I have it on. I'm sitting there going, These guys are brilliant. They're enough to scare the living bejeebers out of you on the you radio. Know, what people don't but people what people don't remember, and of course John who said he had a complete copy of it and they they distributed it and so on. Uh, the one thing people forget about War of the Worlds is those people who got scared by that program and started packing their bags and taking off only were like Phil. They only read the headline. Because if you <laughs> listen to the show for a half hour, the second half was a drama about the guys like in a cave hiding from the Martians and whatever. And there's a whole dialogue and narration. And it completely... It was great. It was great. No, but what I'm saying is the complete program is not... The only thing that he did was at the beginning... He made it sound like it was a real news broadcast and that it was coming from, you know, uh, what was it? Grover's... Grover's Mills. Grover's yeah, Mills. Grover's Corners. Grover's, yeah, Grover's Corners. Corners. And, and uh, oh, here they're coming out. And now, oh, my God. And then the... yeah. Right. So th- that part, everybody remembers. And by that time, half the people had packed up and were leaving for the mountains, you know. <laughs> so, but they didn't stick... If they had stuck around for the second half, it's just a pure drama, you know. But also, they said, "This is only a play." But people didn't didn't listen to that. Yeah, you know, that's right. When they announced that, well, mm-hmm. my friend of mine down in Texas says his uncle and his grandfather, a few friends, thought it was a Martian. What they did was they shot out a water tower with their shotgun, oh. and they killed a water tower. <laughs> Santa Fe, uh, uh, Southern Pacific they water tower. They attacked a water Texas. tower. They attacked the water tower and thought it was a Martian. Boy, are there some morons in your family. Yeah. No, not my family. No, not my family. Hell no. They didn't notice that water tower the day before? <laughs> no, they, didn't notice they were so scared. They were so scared. Uh, and you know, might add, Rob, Martian. the day before that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's but, just know, what's nuts is, you know, people are so dumb. They could do the same damn thing today with a different storyline and make people yep. freak out about anything. Well, I mean, look, yep. we got Trump as president. That's a good Fake example. Fake that, yeah, still running. <laughs> Too bad that's not a serial. <laughs> you know, he did one thing when he was in. Right up for you guys. He did one thing when he was in Poland that was just such a thing. 
he, you know, he said that this is such a threat to Western civilization. It's oh. like, oh my God, you're just using such horrible scare tactics. Well, wait a minute, you know, did, did you see the shot? True. Did you see the shot of him being greeted by the uh, prime minister? And oh, then the handshake the, the, uh, with the wife. The, uh, the wife goes for for Trump, and he puts his hand out, and she walks right by him, and shakes malaria Trump's hand. <laughs> And and he there is a look on his face for a brief moment that is precious. Like what happened here? Wasn't she supposed to shake my hand? Who I was mean, it? The, I'm the president. Damn it! It was it was the uh, the first lady of Hungary. Poland. Poland. She was a hot looking Polak, wasn't she? Oh yeah, God. yeah. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. It was explained that protocol is that the prime minister shakes Trump's hand. The first lady of Poland shakes the first lady's hand. But Trump <laughs> didn't know that, so he looked like, what happened? Did you go to shake yeah, my yeah. hand? He thinks every woman wants to, you know, <laughs> yeah. God's gift. So. Yeah. He wants you know, to grab ooh, so he got, he got her attention by, she, he got her attention by grabbing her pussy. pussy. <laughs> right, Jason. You he beat me to for his limo. Huh? <laughs> In his oh, hotel yeah. room. Yeah. I wonder if he, he really does. I wonder, if he, has that, pussy, I wonder if he has masturbate. I wonder if he has that same conversation he had on the bus on Air Force One as he's getting off. You know, looking out, going, "Who's greeting him?" Wow, look at her. She's pretty hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hurt by the pussy. Yeah. I d Ooh. does does malaria look like she's happy? No, oh, no. he never does though. For an Eastern Bloc gal, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's utter she's joy happy for she's an not Eastern Bloc, yeah. huh? <laughs> She's happy she's yeah. not back in the in the homelands. Is Slovenia. Where is it? Wherever is it? Romania. Slovenia. 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 Oh, Slovenia. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, her her parents were pretty wealthy. They had two chickens. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And two donkeys also. <laughs> two pots <laughs> of swimming. And you know, donkey, you know two donkeys will be named uh, named later. Yeah. Even Donald Trump and uh, whoever. Yeah. Um, right. You know, I guess. I guess. All of this has ceased to be funny, you know. No, it hasn't. It's funny. I mean, well, hey, explain to me. Well, it might get funny Scott, tomorrow. <laughs> is it still funny to you? Didn't I read that Family Guy or one of those shows that have been taking a lot of jabs at Trump said that they were going to do less of that? Well, it, at this point, it's a cheap shot. Getting old. It's a cheap shot. Yeah. Well, you I know, know he it, it is Saturday like it, a, 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 as humor. Yeah. As humor, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. You yeah, know, it's, it's too much of a serious issue to no. be making. Light well, it isn't a it's matter that it's too much serious. of a serious issue. It's too easy to do. Yeah. You know, it's, it's every day. Uh, every and every I'm day. like, for instance, I'm very happy that tonight it looks like most of our show last night and tonight. We're devoid of politics. I think everybody is getting fed up, you know, and that uh, I, I've ceased to find Trump funny. I find him just fucking dangerous. Well, he and, is and, dangerous. And, and the the sad, not the the scary thing is that we we get so numb to it that it becomes normal, and we yep. just accept it. Yeah, and yep. that's scary. Yeah, yep. but. But when he's out there, he's out there. You know, there was an article I saw a headline that says most presidents, you know, go, leave the country and they talk up the freedom of the press and all that. He goes and he bashes it. Freedom yeah. of the press. That's one of our Bash that's fake news. <laughs> Everything's well, fake. Well, the uh, fake news is only news that is not flattering to him. Right. That's how you define fake news. And I think that if they someday want to define fake news, that's how it will be defined for history. Hey, they're, they're quitting left and right, these guys. You know, the CNN guys, more stories are coming out that they weren't researched, that they were fake. I mean, get on me for that. And there was one story, and there were three people who got in trouble for that. So don't over overstate it. CNN and the thing, the reason they the right wing people, the reason they got the news. reason they got rid of them was because CNN wants to maintain its integrity. And if there is a story that's misreported, they're going to say, hey, you know, we don't put Absolutely. up with this kind of thing. There's no reason to misreport something. There's no reason to try to make up facts. There's plenty out there 
Yeah. <laughs> Dang. There's plenty of bullshit to yeah, You don't have to go around. search for it and 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 and, and manufacture but, but, but it. But make no there. mistake about it. The reason why Trump, here we go. We've last couple of minutes of the show we're talking about Trump. Uh, that Donald Trump is going after the press and the fake news thing because Donald Trump, much like Adolf Hitler, felt that if he defanged the press, he could then be the final word on everything. So he, he makes you feel that anything they report about him has got to be fake news. Donald Trump and the final solution. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, <laughs> oh God. you know, the, uh, the only thing we have, and look, I'm the first one to assail the press and to yell about the press and the, all of that. I've been doing it for years. Oh, it's a kitty. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. For, for years. But uh, the fact of the matter is that they still are our only stopgap and our only arbiters of some semblance of truth. You know, and the time, the thing that, that brought that to a halt, unfortunately, was Fox, who was very biased, but then would never admit to it or own up to it. How about you, Jeff? What do you think? I am. So every time I listen about Trump, just the other day when he was in Poland, yeah, it, it did sound so much like Russia and uh, I'm sorry, I should say Germany. Yeah. In in the 1939s or something like yeah. that. Well, the one thing I one thing I liked about him in Poland is it seemed as though Poland took to him quite nicely, and that simply justifies everything we thought about the Poles for years. So <laughs> get going, oh, get yeah, going with those Polish ball. jokes again. They deserve them. <laughs> yes, well, uh, John. Get to get to a bad. John. Yeah, the current the current. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go you ahead. Said that? Oh yeah, I think I'm. Sorry. The current Polish, the current Polish ruling party is so far right wing. So I mean, he the Polish uh, prime minister is 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 stifling the press. He's doing all the sort of stuff. He's out Putin and Putin almost on some of this stuff. I uh, think because they had this major scandal yeah. uh, with the other party that was supposed to be so, uh, the guys who were in power, uh, especially the foreign. Uh, is it whatever said? Oh, we know we love America, but they they had they recorded him, uh, in some you know somebody recorded him in some private conversations saying yeah. basically America or Americans are fools. You yeah. know? So of course, big scandal in the middle of all of that. They are now the current. Uh, you know, a lot of those guys got voted out, and now the current peace, something freedom and something yeah. party are not free, and they're they're very uh, you know very right not right wing but just yeah. very uh, they. It's trying to really become totalitarian. Yes. So I think, well, perfect place for Trump to show up. And he actually did talk yeah. a little bit. He wasn't totally about free. Right. I mean, he, I, I don't, he didn't totally. Does, does Mike, link up does Mike them, have but, his hand up? Or did you have your hand yeah, up, Mike? Yeah. 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 Well, yeah when, he gets, when he gets finished. No, go ahead. Because we're running was, out of time. My friend and I were laughing about it. Because, yeah, when Putin meets with Trump, no, it's going to happen. Trump's going to give him a little envelope with a little check and say, hey, Thanks for giving the, giving the USCO yeah. the screw. That's what it's going to do. That son of a bitch going to do it. Watch. By well, the way, I want, I want everybody to know who's does. listening on just audio only, uh, Brian is killing that cat. Yeah. So. <laughs> He's skinning it alive. He eating it for dinner. Is it off or something? Stop or? grabbing that. Oh, no. <laughs> He's playing with his pussy. I, I, think he, I think he just found out it's a girl. Uh, <laughs> he hates it. Poor cat. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that I did hear Trump say that I did like uh, it's time for Europe to start paying more for their own protection. The only pussy that's worthy of my undivided attention. <laughs> 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 well, yeah, uh, uh, but, yeah, NATO, NATO is paying now, you know, that they, they weren't paying before. And now these uh, these NATO countries are uh, supposedly paying their fair share. Well, good. Yeah. that's good. And that's what he wanted. That's good. Yep. Fine. Good. It also Once means we don't. Just, just what I wanted for uh, for uh, for president, a bill collector. <laughs> you know? Two reasons though, why I'm uh, kind of looking sideways, and that noise you hear, as well as this big ass house centipede that I want to find, so that I can maybe train the cat to kill it. <laughs> you know those things with like 24 legs, and they, they can actually bite you, and they, they feel like a bee sting. I've Bill never had that happen to me because right. the son of a bitch dies before he gets. So 
<laughs> 10 feet away from me. Roll you mean theme. Like Millipede. Yeah. yeah. Those fucking things, they scared the hell out of me. There's our theme. <laughs> you can all hear the theme is running. Yeah, uh, uh, have a nice time uh, in uh, yeah, Fire Island. Yeah, well, I'm going, I'm going out, and I'm coming back Sunday. So it's it's like, you mm. know, one one day over, one day there, one day home. You, know. you might like it. You know? no, the I've been there. The I've been things. there over and over and over we'll again. I'm sorry. Yeah, there's two out there. I used to lay on the beach there, all the topless women. It was great. Well, not, at, not, at, not at Sea View. Yeah, in Sea View. <laughs> well, I then you, the it's not the Sea View that's there now. Just make sure yeah. And you you wouldn't want to see Christy. some of those women topless. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> anyway, hey hey God guys, everybody. Uh, thank. By yeah, the way, Jason, love having you here. When's she coming sure. back? Can't happily with you. When she might get hard food. Jason, when's she coming back? We only wish this weekend. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So we'll see you in another couple of weeks. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, thank you, uh, uh, Rob, and thank you, Phil, and thank you, Mike, and thank mm. you, Jeff, and thank you, John, and thank you, Scott Bye. Boddicker, and thank you, Jason, and thank you, Brian, <laughs> and thank you, Kevin. You hardly said anything tonight, Kevin. But yeah, some, tried. some nights you do and some nights you don't. Thank hey, you everybody, don't. wave goodbye to everybody, will you? Okay. As the village people say about Fire Island, don't go near the bushes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Anyway. Uh, that's our, uh, our, uh, our, uh, 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 let me see here. Let me get my picture on here. There we go. Uh, say good night to everybody and, uh, let me hang up on them. So the next show can, uh, can, uh, use the, uh, use the Skype lines. Hey, I want to thank you for joining us. Uh, we're going to take tomorrow night off. Jack Bishop will be here for us in our stead. And then we will be back again, uh, the following Tuesday. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, uh, everybody, there won't be any, there uh, won't be any uh, updates on the on-demand, uh, and, uh, yeah, but there will be a flashback weekend here. Anyway, that's it. I'll, it doesn't matter anyway. It's light listening this week because of the holiday and all of that. Anyway, that's it. Uh, I'm Alex Bennett. Stay tuned for the, the, uh, intersection, which is next with Jack and Amy, followed by Connections. As always, I say it to you. I'll see you on Tuesday, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Okay.